Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006. Republic Act No. 9344. An act establishing a comprehensive juvenile justice and welfare system, creating the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council under the Department of Social Welfare and Development, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. As amended by Republic Act No. 10630, approved on October 3, 2013. Title 1. Governing Principles Chapter 1. Title, Policy and Definition of Terms Section 1. Short Title and Scope This Act, shall be known as the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006. It shall cover the different stages involving children at risk, and children in conflict with the law, from prevention, to rehabilitation and reintegration. Section 2. Declaration of State Policy The following state policies, shall be observed at all times. a. The state recognizes the vital role of children and youth in nation building, and shall promote and protect their physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual and social well-being. It shall inculcate in the youth patriotism and nationalism, and encourage their involvement in public and civic affairs. b. The state shall protect the best interests of the child, through measures that will ensure the observance of international standards of child protection, especially those to which the Philippines is a party. Proceedings before any authority, shall be conducted in the best interest of the child, and in a manner which allows the child to participate and to express himself or herself freely. The participation of children in the program and policy formulation, and implementation related to juvenile justice and welfare, shall be ensured by the concerned government agency. C. The state likewise recognizes the right of children to assistance, including proper care and nutrition, and special protection from all forms of neglect, abuse, cruelty and exploitation, and other conditions prejudicial to their development. d. Pursuant to Article 40 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, the state recognizes the right of every child, alleged as, accused of, adjudged, or recognized as, having infringed the penal law, to be treated in a manner consistent with the promotion of the child's sense of dignity and worth taking into account the child's age, and desirability of promoting his or her reintegration. Whenever appropriate and desirable, the state shall adopt measures for dealing with such children, without resorting to judicial proceedings, providing that human rights and legal safeguards are fully respected. It shall ensure that children, are dealt with in a manner appropriate to their well-being, by providing for, among others, a variety of disposition measures, such as care guidance and supervision orders, counseling, probation, foster care, education and vocational training programs, and other alternatives to institutional care. e. The administration of the juvenile justice and welfare system, shall take into consideration, the cultural and religious perspectives of the Filipino people, particularly the indigenous peoples and the Muslims, consistent with the protection of the rights of children belonging to these communities. f. The state shall apply the principles of restorative justice, in all its laws, policies and programs applicable to children in conflict with the law. Section 3. Liberal Construction of this Act In case of doubt, the interpretation of any of the provisions of this Act including its implementing rules and regulations or IRRs, shall be construed liberally in favor of the child in conflict with the law. Section 4. Definition of Terms The following terms as used in this Act, shall be defined as follows. a. Bail. Refers to the security given for the release of a person in custody of the law, furnished by him or her or a bondsman to guarantee his or her appearance before any court. Bail may be given in the form of corporate security, property bond, cash deposit, or recognizance. b. Best interest of the child. Refers to the totality of the circumstances and conditions, 
which are most congenial to the survival, protection and feelings of security of the child, and most encouraging to the child's physical, psychological and emotional development. It also means the least detrimental available alternative, for safeguarding the growth and development of the child. C. Child refers to a person, under the age of 18 years. D. Child at risk. Refers to a child, who is vulnerable to, and at the risk of committing criminal offense, because of personal, family and social circumstances, such as, but not limited to the following. 1. Being abused by any person, through sexual, physical, psychological, mental, economic, or any other means. And the parents or guardian refuse, are unwilling, or unable to provide protection for the child. 2. Being exploited, including sexually or economically. 3. Being abandoned or neglected. And after diligent search and inquiry, the parent or guardian cannot be found. 4. Coming from a dysfunctional or broken family, or without a parent or guardian. 5. Being out of school. 6. Being a street child. 7. Being a member of a gang. 8. Living in a community with a high level of criminality, or drug abuse. And? 9. Living in situations of armed conflict. E. Child in conflict with the law. Refers to a child, who is alleged as. Accused of. Or judged as, having committed an offense under Philippine laws. F. Community-based programs. Refers to the programs provided in a community setting. Developed for purposes of intervention and diversion. As well as rehabilitation of the child in conflict with the law. For reintegration into his or her family, and or community. G. Court. Refers to a family court. Or in places where there are no family courts, any regional trial court. H. Deprivation of liberty. Refers to any form of detention or imprisonment. Or to the placement of a child in conflict with the law. In a public or private custodial setting. From which the child in conflict with the law, is not permitted to leave at will. By order of any judicial or administrative authority. I. Diversion. Refers to an alternative, child-appropriate process of determining the responsibility and treatment of a child in conflict with the law. On the basis of his or her social, cultural, economic, psychological or educational background, without resorting to formal court proceedings. J. Diversion Program. Refers to the program that the child in conflict with the law, is required to undergo after he or she is found responsible for an offense, without resorting to formal court proceedings. K. Initial contact with the child. Refers to the apprehension, or taking into custody of a child in conflict with a law enforcement officers, or private citizens. It includes the time when the child alleged to be in conflict with the law, receives a subpoena under Section 3B of Rule 112 of the Revised Rules of Criminal Procedure, or summons under Section 8A, or Section 9B, of the same rule, in cases that do not require preliminary investigation, or where there is no necessity to place the child alleged to be in conflict with the law, under immediate custody. L. Intervention. Refers to a series of activities, which are designed to address issues that cause the child to commit an offense. It may take the form of an individualized treatment program, which may include counseling, skills training, education, and other activities that will enhance his or her psychological, emotional and psychosocial well-being. M. Juvenile Justice and Welfare System Refers to a system, dealing with children at risk, and children in conflict with the law, which provides child-appropriate proceedings including programs and services for prevention, diversion, rehabilitation, reintegration and aftercare, to ensure their normal growth and development. N. Law Enforcement Officer. Refers to the person in authority, 
or his or her agent as defined in Article 152 of the Revised Penal Code, including a Barungai Tanud. O. Offense. Refers to any act or omission, whether punishable under special laws or the Revised Penal Code, as amended. P. Recognizance. Refers to an undertaking, in lieu of a bond, assumed by a parent or custodian, who shall be responsible for the appearance in court of the child in conflict with the law, when required. Q. Restorative justice. Refers to a principle, which requires a process of resolving conflicts, with the maximum involvement of the victim, the offender and the community. It seeks to obtain reparation for the victim. Reconciliation of the offender, the offended and the community. And reassurance to the offender, that he or she can be reintegrated into society. It also enhances public safety by activating the offender, the victim, and the community in prevention strategies. R. Status offenses. Refers to offenses, which discriminate only against a child, while an adult does not suffer any penalty for committing similar acts. These shall include curfew violations, truancy, parental disobedience and the like. S. Bahai Pug Aza. Refers to a 24-hour child caring institution. Established funded and managed by local government units or LGUs, and licensed and or accredited non-government organizations or NGOs, providing short-term residential care for children in conflict with the law, who are above 15, but below 18 years of age, who are awaiting court disposition of their cases, or transfer to other agencies or jurisdiction. Part of the features of a Baha'i Pug Aza, is an intensive juvenile intervention and support center. This will cater to children in conflict with the law, in accordance with sections 20, 20A, and 20B, hereof. A multidisciplinary team, composed of a social worker, a psychologist or mental health professional, a medical doctor, an educational or guidance counselor, and a Burungai Council for the Protection of Children or BCPC member, shall operate the Baha'i Pug Aza. The team will work on the individualized intervention plan, with the child and the child's family. T. Youth Rehabilitation Center. Refers to a 24-hour residential care facility, managed by the Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD, LGUs, licensed and or accredited and GOS monitored by the DSWD, which provides care, treatment and rehabilitation services for children in conflict with the law. Rehabilitation Services are provided under the guidance of a trained staff, where residents are cared for under a structured therapeutic environment, with the end view of reintegrating them into their families and communities, as socially functioning individuals. Physical mobility of residents of said centers may be restricted, pending court disposition of the charges against them. U. Victimless crimes. Refers to offenses where there is no private offended party. Chapter 2. Principles in the Administration of Juvenile Justice and Welfare Section 5. Rights of the Child in Conflict with the Law Every child in conflict with the law shall have the following rights, including but not limited to a. The right not to be subjected to torture, or other cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. b the right not to be imposed a sentence of capital punishment or life imprisonment, without the possibility of release. c. The right not to be deprived unlawfully or arbitrarily, of his or her liberty. Detention or imprisonment being a disposition of last resort, and which shall be for the shortest appropriate period of time. d. The right to be treated with humanity and respect for the inherent dignity of the person and in a manner which takes into account the needs of a person of his or her age. In particular, a child deprived of liberty, shall be separated from adult offenders at all times. No child shall be detained together with adult offenders. He or she shall be conveyed separately to, or from court. He or she shall await hearing of his or her own case, in separate holding area. 
a child in conflict with the law, shall have the right to maintain contact with his or her family, through correspondence and visits. Save in exceptional circumstances. E. The right to prompt access to legal and other appropriate assistance. As well as the right to challenge the legality of the deprivation of his or her liberty, before a court or other competent, independent and impartial authority, and to a prompt decision on such action. F. The right to bail and recognizance, in appropriate cases. G. The right to testify as a witness in his or her own behalf. Under the rule on examination of a child witness. H. The right to have his or her privacy respected fully, at all stages of the proceedings. I. The right to diversion if she or he is qualified. And voluntarily avails of the same. J. The right to be imposed a judgment in proportion to the gravity of the offense. Where his or her interest, the rights of the victim and the needs of society, are all taken into consideration by the court, under the principle of restorative justice. K. The right to have restrictions on his or her personal liberty limited to the minimum. And where discretion is given by law to the judge to determine whether to impose fine or imprisonment, the imposition of fine being preferred as the more appropriate penalty. L. In general the right to automatic suspension of sentence. M. The right to probation, as an alternative to imprisonment if qualified under the probation law. N. The right to be free from liability for perjury, concealment or misrepresentation, and O. Other rights as provided for under existing laws, rules and regulations. The state further adopts the provisions of the United Nations Standard Minimum Rules for the Administration of Juvenile Justice, or Beijing Rules, United Nations Guidelines for the Prevention of Juvenile Delinquency, or the Riyadh Guidelines, and the United Nations Rules for the Protection of Juvenile Deprived of Liberty. Section 6. Minimum Age of Criminal Responsibility a child 15 years of age or under, at the time of the commission of the offense, shall be exempt from criminal liability. However, the child shall be subjected to an intervention program, pursuant to Section 20 of this Act. A child is deemed to be 15 years of age, on the day of the 15th anniversary of his or her birth date. A child above 15 years but below 18 years of age, shall likewise be exempt from criminal liability, and be subjected to an intervention program, unless he or she has acted with discernment, in which case, such child shall be subjected to the appropriate proceedings in accordance with this Act. The exemption from criminal liability herein established, does not include exemption from civil liability, which shall be enforced in accordance with existing laws. Section 7 Determination of age. The child in conflict with the law, shall enjoy the presumption of minority. He or she shall enjoy all the rights of a child in conflict with the law, until he or she is proven to be 18 years of age or older. The age of a child may be determined from the child's birth certificate, baptismal certificate, or any other pertinent documents. In the absence of these documents, age may be based on information from the child himself or herself testimonies of other persons, the physical appearance of the child, and other relevant evidence. In case of doubt as to the age of the child, it shall be resolved in his or her favor. Any person contesting the age of the child in conflict with the law, prior to the filing of the information, in any appropriate court, may file a case in a summary proceedings, for the determination of age before the family court, which shall decide the case within 24 hours from receipt of the appropriate pleadings of all interested parties. If a case has been filed against the child in conflict with the law, and is pending in the appropriate court, the person shall file a motion to determine the age of the child, in the same court where the case is pending. Pending hearing on the said motion, proceedings on the main case shall be suspended. In all proceedings, law enforcement officers, prosecutors, judges, and other government officials concerned, 
shall exert all efforts at determining the age of a child in conflict with the law. Title II. Structures in the Administration of Juvenile Justice and Welfare Section 8. Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council or JJWC A Juvenile Justice and Welfare Council or JJWC is hereby created and attached to the Department of Social Welfare and Development, and placed under its administrative supervision. The JJWC shall be chaired by an Undersecretary of the Department of Social Welfare and Development. It shall ensure the effective implementation of this Act, and coordination among the following agencies. A. Department of Justice or DOJ. B. Council for the Welfare of Children or CWC. C. Department of Education or DEP Ed. D. Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG. E. Public Attorney's Office or POW. F. Bureau of Corrections or Buker. G. Parole and Probation Administration or PPA. H. National Bureau of Investigation or NBI. I. Philippine National Police or PMP. J. Bureau of Jail Management and Penology or BJMP. K. Commission on Human Rights or CHR. L. Technical Education and Skills Development Authority or TESDA. M. National Youth Commission or NYC. And? N. Other Institutions, Focused on Juvenile Justice and Intervention Programs. The JJWC shall be composed of representatives, whose ranks shall not be lower than director, to be designated by the concerned heads of the following departments or agencies and shall receive emoluments as may be determined by the Council, in accordance with existing budget and accounting rules and regulations. 1. Department of Justice or DOJ. 2. Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD. 3. Council for the Welfare of Children or CWC. 4. Department of Education or DEP Ed. 5. Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG. 6. Commission on Human Rights or CHR. 7. National Youth Commission or NYC. 8. Two representatives from NGOs, to be designated by the Secretary of Social Welfare and Development, to be selected based on the criteria established by the Council. 9. Department of Health or DOH and. 10. One representative each from the League of Provinces, League of Cities, League of Municipalities and League of Barangays. There shall be a Regional Juvenile Justice and Welfare Committee, or RJJWC in each region. The RJJWCs will be under the administration and supervision of the JJWC. The RJJWC shall be chaired by the Director of the Regional Office of the DSWD. It shall ensure the effective implementation of this Act at the regional and LGU levels, and the coordination among its member agencies. The RJJWC will be composed of permanent representatives, who shall have a rank, not lower than an assistant regional director or its equivalent, to be designated by the concerned department heads from the following agencies, and shall receive emoluments as may be determined by the Council in accordance with existing budget and accounting rules and regulations. 1. Department of Justice or DOJ. 2. Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD. 3. Department of Education or DEP Ed. 4. Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG. 5. Commission on Human Rights or CHR. 6. Department of Health or DOH. 7. Two representatives from NGOs operating within the region, selected by the RJJWC based on the criteria established by the JJWC. 8. One sectoral representative from the children or youth sector within the region. And, 9. One representative from the League of Provinces Cities Municipalities Barungays of the Philippines. The JJWC shall convene within 15 days from the effectivity of this Act. The Secretary of Social Welfare and Development, 
shall determine the organizational structure and staffing pattern of the JJWC National Secretariat and the RJJWC Secretariat. In the implementation of this Act, the JJWC shall consult with the various leagues of local government officials. The JJWC shall coordinate with the Office of the Court Administrator and the Philippine Judicial Academy to ensure the realization of its mandate and the proper discharge of its duties and functions, as herein provided. Section 9. Duties and Functions of the JJWC The JJWC shall have the following duties and functions. a. To oversee the implementation of this Act. b. To advise the President, on all matters and policies relating to juvenile justice and welfare. C. To assist the concerned agencies, in the review and redrafting of existing policies or regulations, or in the formulation of new ones, in line with the provisions of this Act. D. To periodically develop a comprehensive three- to five-year national juvenile intervention program, with the participation of government agencies concerned, NGOs and youth organizations. E. To coordinate the implementation of the juvenile intervention programs and activities by national government agencies, and other activities which may have an important bearing on the success of the entire national juvenile intervention program. All programs relating to juvenile justice and welfare, shall be adopted in consultation with the JJWC. F. To consult with the various leagues of local government officials, in the formulation and recommendation of policies and strategies, for the prevention of juvenile delinquency, and the promotion of juvenile justice and welfare. g. To formulate and recommend policies and strategies, in consultation with children, for the prevention of juvenile delinquency, and the administration of justice, as well as for the treatment and rehabilitation of the children in conflict with the law. h. To collect relevant information, and conduct continuing research, and support evaluations and studies on all matters relating to juvenile justice and welfare, such as, but not limited to. 1. The performance and results achieved by juvenile intervention programs, and by activities of the local government units and other government agencies. 2. The periodic trends, problems and causes of juvenile delinquency and crimes. And, 3 the particular needs of children in conflict with the law and custody. The data gathered, shall be used by the JJWC in the improvement of the administration of juvenile justice and welfare system. The JJWC shall submit an annual report to Congress, on the implementation of the provisions this Act. The JJWC shall set up a mechanism, to ensure that children are involved in research and policy development. I, through duly designated persons, and with the assistance of the agencies provided in the preceding section, to conduct regular inspections in detention and rehabilitation facilities, and to undertake spot inspections on their own initiative, in order to check compliance with the standards provided herein, and to make the necessary recommendations to appropriate agencies. J to initiate and coordinate the conduct of trainings for the personnel of the agencies involved, in the administration of the juvenile justice and welfare system, and the juvenile intervention program. K. To submit an annual report to the President, on the implementation of this Act. And, L. To perform such other functions as may be necessary to implement the provisions of this Act. Section 9A. Duties and Functions of the RJJWC The RJJWC shall have the following duties and functions. a. To oversee and ensure the effective implementation of this Act, at the regional level and at the level of the LGUs. b. To assist the concerned agencies, in the implementation and in compliance with the JJWC's adopted policies or regulations or provide substantial inputs to the JJWC, in the formulation of new ones in line with the provisions of this Act. c. To assist in the development of the comprehensive 3-5 to five year local juvenile intervention program, with the participation of concerned LGUs, 
NGOs and youth organizations within the region, and monitor its implementation. D. To coordinate the implementation of the juvenile intervention programs and activities, by national government agencies, and other activities within the region. E. To oversee the programs and operation of the Intensive Juvenile Intervention and Support Center, established within the region. F. To collect relevant regional information, and conduct continuing research, and support evaluations and studies on all matters relating to juvenile justice and welfare within the region, such as, but not limited to. 1. Performance and results achieved by juvenile intervention programs, and by activities of the LGUs and other government agencies within the region. 2. The periodic trends, problems, and causes of juvenile delinquency and crimes from the LGU level to the regional level. And? 3. The particular needs of children in conflict with the law in custody within their regional jurisdiction. The data gathered shall be forwarded by the RJJWC to the JJWC on an annual basis, and as may be deemed necessary by the JJWC. g. Through duly designated persons, and with the assistance of the agencies provided in the preceding section, to conduct regular inspections in detention and rehabilitation facilities within the region, and to undertake spot inspections on their own initiative, in order to check compliance with the standards provided herein and to make the necessary reports and recommendations to appropriate agencies, and to the JJWC. H. To initiate and coordinate the conduct of trainings, for the personnel of the agencies involved in the administration, of the juvenile justice and welfare system, and the juvenile intervention program within the region. I. To submit an annual report to the JJWC, on the implementation of this act and j. To perform such other functions as may be determined by the JJWC to implement the provisions of this Act. Section 10. Policies and Procedures on Juvenile Justice and Welfare All government agencies enumerated in Section 8 shall, with the assistance of the JJWC, and within one year from the effectivity of this Act, draft policies and procedures consistent with the standards set in the law. These policies and procedures shall be modified accordingly, in consultation with the JJWC upon the completion of the National Juvenile Intervention Program, as provided under Section 9D. Section 11. Child Rights Center or CRC. The existing Child Rights Center of the Commission on Human Rights shall ensure that the status rights and interests of children, are upheld in accordance with the Constitution and International Instruments on Human Rights. The CHR shall strengthen the monitoring of government compliance of all treaty obligations, including the timely and regular submission of reports before the treaty bodies, as well as the implementation and dissemination of recommendations and conclusions by government agencies, as well as NGOs and civil society. Title 3. Prevention of Juvenile Delinquency Chapter 1. The Role of the Different Sectors Section 12. The Family The family shall be responsible for the primary nurturing and rearing of children, which is critical in delinquency prevention. As far as practicable, and in accordance with the procedure of this Act, a child in conflict with the law, shall be maintained in his or her family. Section 13. The Educational System. Educational institutions shall work together with families, community organizations and agencies in the prevention of juvenile delinquency and in the rehabilitation and reintegration of child in conflict with the law. Schools shall provide adequate, necessary, and individualized educational schemes for children manifesting difficult behavior, and children in conflict with the law. In cases where children in conflict with the law are taken into custody or detained in rehabilitation centers, they should be provided the opportunity to continue learning under an alternative learning system, with basic literacy program, or non-formal education accreditation equivalency system. 
Section 14. The Role of the Mass Media. The mass media shall play an active role in the promotion of child rights and delinquency prevention, by relaying consistent messages through a balanced approach. Media practitioners, shall therefore, have the duty to maintain the highest critical and professional standards in reporting and covering cases of children in conflict with the law. In all publicity concerning children, the best interest of the child should be the primordial and paramount concern. Any undue, misappropriate and sensationalized publicity of any case involving a child in conflict with the law, is hereby declared a violation of the child's rights. Section 15. Establishment and Strengthening of Local Councils for the Protection of Children Local Councils for the Protection of Children or LCPC shall be established in all levels of local government, and where they have already been established, they shall be strengthened within one year from the effectivity of this Act. Membership in the LCPC shall be chosen from among the responsible members of the community, including a representative from the youth sector, as well as representatives from government and private agencies concerned with the welfare of children. The local council shall serve as the primary agency to coordinate with and assist the LGU concerned for the adoption of a comprehensive plan on delinquency prevention and to oversee its proper implementation. 1% of the internal revenue allotment of barangays, municipalities and cities shall be allocated for the strengthening and implementation of the programs of the LCPC, provided that the disbursement of the fund shall be made by the LGU concerned. Section 16. Appointment of Local Social Welfare and Development Officer. All LGUs shall appoint a duly licensed social worker, as its local social welfare and development officer, tasked to assist children in conflict with the law. Section 17. Sungi Ni Ung Kabatan. The Sungi Ni Ung Kabatan or SGA, shall coordinate with the LCPC, in the formulation and implementation of juvenile intervention and diversion programs in the community. Chapter 2. Comprehensive Juvenile Intervention Program Section 18. Development of a Comprehensive Juvenile Intervention Program A Comprehensive Juvenile Intervention Program, covering at least a three-year period, shall be instituted in LGUs from the Burungai to the provincial level. The LGUs shall set aside an amount, necessary to implement their respective juvenile intervention programs to their annual budget. The LGUs in coordination with the LCPC, shall call on all sectors concerned, particularly the child-focused institutions, NGOs, people's organizations, educational institutions, and government agencies involved in delinquency prevention, to participate in the planning process and implementation of juvenile intervention programs. Such programs shall be implemented consistent with the national program formulated and designed by the JJWC. The implementation of the Comprehensive Juvenile Intervention Program shall be reviewed and assessed annually by the LGUs, in coordination with the LCPC. Results of the assessment shall be submitted by the provincial and city governments to the JJWC, not later than March 30th of every year. Section 19. Community-Based Programs on Juvenile Justice and Welfare Community-Based Programs on Juvenile Justice and Welfare shall be instituted by the LGUs through the LCPC, school, youth organizations and other concerned agencies. The LGUs shall provide community-based services which respond to the special needs, problems, interests and concerns of children, and which offer appropriate counseling and guidance to them and their families. These programs shall consist of three levels. A. Primary intervention includes general measures to promote social justice and equal opportunity, which tackle perceived root causes of offending. B. Secondary intervention includes measures to assist children at risk. And C. Tertiary intervention includes measures to avoid unnecessary contact with the formal justice system and other measures to prevent reoffending. 
Title 4. Treatment of Children Below the Age of Criminal Responsibility Section 20. Children Below the Age of Criminal Responsibility If it has been determined that the child taken into custody is 15 years old or below, the authority which will have an initial contact with the child, in consultation with the local social welfare and development officer, has the duty to immediately release the child, to the custody of his or her parents, or guardian, or in the absence thereof, the child's nearest relative. The child shall be subjected to a community-based intervention program, supervised by the local social welfare and development officer, unless the best interest of the child requires the referral of the child, to a youth care facility, or Baha'i Pug AZA managed by LGUs or licensed and or accredited NGOs monitored by the DSWD. The local social welfare and development officer shall determine the appropriate programs for the child who has been released, in consultation with the child and the person having custody over the child. If the parents, guardians or nearest relatives cannot be located, or if they refuse to take custody, the child may be released to any of the following. A. A duly registered non-governmental or religious organization. B. A Burungai official, or a member of the Burungai Council for the Protection of Children or BCPC. C. A local social welfare and development officer, or, when and where appropriate, the DSWD. If the child has been found by the local social welfare and development officer, to be dependent, abandoned, neglected, or abused by his or her parents, and the best interest of the child requires that he or she be placed in a youth care facility or Baha'i Pagaza, the child's parents or guardians, shall execute a written authorization for the voluntary commitment of the child. Provided, that if the child has no parents or guardians, or if they refuse or fail to execute the written authorization for voluntary commitment, the proper petition for involuntary commitment, shall be immediately filed by the DSWD, or the Local Social Welfare and Development Office or LSWD O pursuant to Presidential Decree No. 603, as amended, otherwise known as the Child and Youth Welfare Code, and the Supreme Court Rule on Commitment of Children. Provided, further, that the minimum age for children committed to a youth care facility or Baha'i Pagaza, shall be 12 years old. Section 20A. Serious Crimes Committed by Children, Who Are Exempt from Criminal Responsibility A child who is above 12 years of age, up to 15 years of age, and who commits parricide, murder, infanticide, kidnapping, and serious illegal detention, where the victim is killed or raped, robbery, with homicide or rape, destructive arson, rape, or carnapping where the driver or occupant is killed or raped, or offenses under Republic Act No. 9165. The Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, punishable by more than 12 years of imprisonment, shall be deemed a neglected child under Presidential Decree No. 603, as amended and shall be mandatorily placed in a special facility within the youth care faculty or Baha'i Pagaza, called the Intensive Juvenile Intervention and Support Center or IJISC. In accordance with existing laws, rules, procedures and guidelines, the proper petition for involuntary commitment and placement under the IJISC, shall be filed by the local social welfare and development officer of the LGU, where the offense was committed or by the DSWD social worker in the local social welfare and development officer's absence, within 24 hours from the time of the receipt of a report on the alleged commission of said child. The court, where the petition for involuntary commitment has been filed, shall decide on the petition within 72 hours, from the time the said petition has been filed by the DSWD or LSWDO. The court will determine the initial period of placement of the child within the IJISC, which shall not be less than one year. The multidisciplinary team of the IJISC will submit to the court a case study and progress report to include a psychiatric evaluation report and recommend the reintegration of the child to his or her family or the extension of the placement under the IJISC. The multidisciplinary team will also submit a report to the court on the services extended to the parents and family of the child, and the compliance of the parents in the intervention program. 
the court will decide whether the child has successfully completed the center-based intervention program and is already prepared to be reintegrated with his or her family, or if there is a need for the continuation of the center-based rehabilitation of the child. The court will determine the next period of assessment or hearing on the commitment of the child. Section 20b. Repetition of Offenses. A child, who is above 12 years of age, up to 15 years of age, and who commits an offense for the second time or oftener, provided that the child was previously subjected to a community-based intervention program, shall be deemed a neglected child, under Presidential Decree No. 603, as amended, and shall undergo an intensive intervention program supervised by the local social welfare and development officer. Provided further, that, if the best interest of the child requires that he or she be placed in a youth care facility or Baha'i Pug Aza, the child's parents or guardians, shall execute a written authorization for the voluntary commitment of the child. Provided finally, that if the child has no parents or guardians, or if they refuse or fail to execute the written authorization for voluntary commitment, the proper petition for involuntary commitment shall be immediately filed by the DSWD or the LSWDO, pursuant to Presidential Decree No. 603, as amended. Section 20C. Exploitation of Children for Commission of Crimes. Any person who, in the commission of a crime, makes use, takes advantage of, or profits from the use of children, including any person who abuses his or her authority over the child, or who, with abuse of confidence, takes advantage of the vulnerabilities of the child and shall induce, threaten or instigate the commission of the crime, shall be imposed the penalty prescribed by law for the crime committed in its maximum period. Section 20D. Joint Parental Responsibility Based on the recommendation of the multidisciplinary team of the IJISC, the LSWDO, or the DSWD, the court may require the parents of a child in conflict with the law to undergo counseling, or any other intervention that, in the opinion of the court, would advance the welfare and best interest of the child. As used in this act, parents shall mean any of the following. a. Biological parents of the child or b. Adoptive parents of the child or c. Individuals who have custody of the child A court exercising jurisdiction over a child in conflict with the law may require the attendance of one or both parents of the child at the place where the proceedings are to be conducted. The parents shall be liable for damages unless they prove, to the satisfaction of the court, that they were exercising reasonable supervision over the child at the time the child committed the offense, and exerted reasonable effort and utmost diligence to prevent or discourage the child from committing another offense. Section 20E. Assistance to Victims of Offenses Committed by Children The victim of the offense committed by a child, and the victim's family, shall be provided the appropriate assistance and psychological intervention by the LSWDO, the DSWD and other concerned agencies. Title 5. Juvenile Justice and Welfare System Chapter 1. Initial Contact with the Child Section 21. Procedure for Taking the Child into Custody from the moment a child is taken into custody, the law enforcement officer shall a. Explain to the child in simple language and in a dialect that he or she can understand why he or she is being placed under custody and the offense that he or she allegedly committed. b. Inform the child of the reason for such custody and advise the child of his or her constitutional rights in a language or dialect understood by him or her c. Properly identify himself or herself, and present proper identification to the child. d. Refrain from using vulgar or profane words, and from sexually harassing or abusing, or making sexual advances on the child in conflict with the law. e. Avoid displaying or using any firearm, weapon, 
handcuffs or other instruments of force or restraint, unless absolutely necessary, and only after all other methods of control have been exhausted and have failed. F. Refrain from subjecting the child in conflict with the law to greater restraint than is necessary for his or her apprehension. G. Avoid violence or unnecessary force. H. Determine the age of the child, pursuant to Section 7 of this Act. I. Immediately but not later than 8 hours after apprehension, turn over custody of the child, to the Social Welfare and Development Office, or other accredited NGOs, and notify the child's parents or guardian and public attorney's office of the child apprehension. The Social Welfare and Development Officer, shall explain to the child and the child's parents or guardians the consequences of the child's act, with a view towards counseling and rehabilitation, diversion from the criminal justice system, and reparation, if appropriate. J. Take the child immediately to the proper medical and health officer, for a thorough physical and mental examination. The examination results shall be kept confidential, unless otherwise ordered by the family court. Whenever the medical treatment is required, steps shall be immediately undertaken to provide the same. K. Ensure, that should detention of the child in conflict with the law be necessary, the child shall be secured in quarters separate from that of the opposite sex and adult offenders. L. Record the following in the initial investigation. 1. Whether handcuffs or other instruments of restraint were used, and if so, the reason for such. 2. That the parent or guardians of a child, the DSWD, and the PAL have been duly informed of the apprehension and the details thereof. And? 3. The exhaustion of measures to determine the age of a child, and the precise details of the physical and medical examination, or the failure to submit a child to such examination. And? M. Ensure that all statements signed by the child during investigation, shall be witnessed by the child's parents or guardians, social worker, or legal counsel in attendance, who shall affix his or her signature to the said statement. A child in conflict with the law, shall only be searched by a law enforcement officer of the same gender, and shall not be locked up in a detention cell. Section 22. Duties during initial investigation. The law enforcement officer shall in his or her investigation, determine where the case involving the child in conflict with the law, should be referred. The taking of the statement of the child, shall be conducted in the presence of the following. 1. Child's counsel of choice, or in the absence thereof, a lawyer from the public attorney's office. 2. The child's parents, guardian, or nearest relative, as the case may be. And? 3 the local social welfare and development officer. In the absence of the child's parents, guardian, or nearest relative, and the local social welfare and development officer, the investigation shall be conducted in the presence of a representative of an NGO, religious group, or member of the BCPC. The social worker shall conduct an initial assessment to determine the appropriate interventions and whether the child acted with discernment using the discernment assessment tools developed by the DSWD. The initial assessment, shall be without prejudice to the preparation of a more comprehensive case study report. The local social worker, shall do either of the following. a. Proceed in accordance with section 20 if the child is 15 years or below, or above 15 but below 18 years old, who acted without discernment. And? b. If the child is above 15 years old but below 18 and who acted with discernment, proceed to diversion under the following chapter. Chapter 2. Diversion. Section 23. System of Diversion. Children in conflict with the law, shall undergo diversion programs, without undergoing court proceedings, subject to the conditions herein provided a. Where the imposable penalty for the crime committed is not more than six years imprisonment, the law enforcement officer or Poonung Burungai, with the assistance of the local social welfare and development officer, 
or other members of the LCPC, shall conduct mediation, family conferencing and conciliation, and where appropriate, adopt indigenous mode of conflict resolution in accordance with the best interest of the child. With a view to accomplishing the objective of restorative justice and the formulation of a diversion program, the child and his or her family shall be present in these activities. b. In victimless crimes, where the imposable penalty is not more than six years imprisonment, the local social welfare and development officer shall meet with the child and his or her parents or guardians for the development of the appropriate diversion and rehabilitation program in coordination with the BCPC. c. Where the imposable penalty for the crime committed exceeds six years imprisonment, diversion measures may be resorted to only by the court. Section 24. Stages where diversion may be conducted. Diversion may be conducted at the Kata Rungung Pumbarungai, the police investigation or the inquest or preliminary investigation stage, and at all levels and phases of the proceedings, including judicial level. Section 25. Conferencing, Mediation, and Conciliation. A child in conflict with the law may undergo conferencing, mediation or conciliation outside the criminal justice system or prior to his entry into said system. A contract of diversion may be entered into during such conferencing, mediation or conciliation proceedings. Section 26. Contract of Diversion. If during the conferencing, mediation or conciliation, the child voluntarily admits the commission of the act, a diversion program shall be developed when appropriate, and desirable as determined under Section 30. Such admission shall not be used against the child in any subsequent judicial, quasi-judicial or administrative proceedings. The diversion program shall be effective and binding if accepted by the parties concerned. The acceptance shall be in writing, and signed by the parties concerned and the appropriate authorities. The local social welfare and development officer, shall supervise the implementation of the diversion program. The diversion proceedings shall be completed within 45 days. The period of prescription of the offense shall be suspended until the completion of the diversion proceedings, but not to exceed 45 days. The child shall present himself or herself to the competent authorities that impose the diversion program at least once a month for reporting and evaluation of the effectiveness of the program. Failure to comply with the terms and conditions of the contract of diversion, as certified by the local social welfare and development officer, shall give the offended party the option to institute the appropriate legal action. The period of prescription of the offense shall be suspended during the effectivity of the diversion program, but not exceeding a period of two years. Section 27 Duty of the Pu Nung Burungai when there is no diversion. If the offense does not fall under Section 23A and B, or if the child, his or her parents or guardian does not consent to a diversion, the Pu Nung Burungai handling the case shall, within three days from determination of the absence of jurisdiction over the case, or termination of the diversion proceedings, as the case may be, forward the records of the case of the child to the law enforcement officer prosecutor or the appropriate court, as the case may be. Upon the issuance of the corresponding document, certifying to the fact that no agreement has been reached by the parties, the case shall be filed according to the regular process. Section 28. Duty of the Law Enforcement Officer when there is no diversion. If the offense does not fall under Section 23A and B, or if the child, his or her parents or guardian, does not consent to a diversion, the Women and Children Protection Desk of the PNP, or other law enforcement officer handling the case shall, within three days from determination of the absence of jurisdiction over the case, or termination of diversion proceedings, forward the records of the case of the child under custody, to the prosecutor or judge concerned, for the conduct of inquest and or preliminary investigation, to determine whether or not the child should remain under custody and correspondingly charged in court. The document transmitting said records shall display the word CHILD in bold letters. 
Section 29. Factors in Determining Diversion Program In determining whether diversion is appropriate and desirable, the following factors shall be taken into consideration. A. The nature and circumstances of the offense charged. B. The frequency and the severity of the act. C. The circumstances of the child such as age, maturity, intelligence, etc. D. The influence of the family and environment on the growth of the child. E. The reparation of injury to the victim. F. The weight of the evidence against the child. G. The safety of the community. And H. The best interest on the child. Section 30. Formulation of the Diversion Program. In formulating a diversion program, the individual characteristics and the peculiar circumstances of the child in conflict with the law shall be used to formulate an individualized treatment. The following factors shall be considered in formulating a diversion program for the child. A. The child's feelings of remorse for the offense he or she committed. B. The parent's or legal guardian's ability to guide and supervise the child. C. The victim's view about the propriety of the measures to be imposed. And D. The availability of community-based program for the rehabilitation and reintegration of the child. Section 31. Kinds of Diversion Programs The diversion program shall include adequate socio-cultural and psychological responses and services for the child. At the different stages where diversion may be resorted to, the following diversion programs may be agreed upon, such as, but not limited to. A. At the level of the Pu Nung Burungai. 1. Restitution of property. 2. Reparation of the damage caused. 3. Indemnification for consequential damages. 4. Written or oral apology. 5. Care guidance and supervision orders. 6. Counseling for the child in conflict with the law and the child's family. 7. Attendance in training, seminars and lectures on. 1. Anger management skills. 2. Problem solving and or conflict resolution skills. 3. Values formation. And 4. Other skills which will aid the child in dealing with situations which can lead to repetition of the offense. 8. Participation in available community-based programs, including community service. Or 9. Participation in education vocation and life skills programs. B. At the level of the law enforcement officer and the prosecutor. 1. Diversion programs specified under paragraphs A. 1. to A. 9. Herein. And 2. Confiscation and forfeiture of the proceeds or instruments of the crime. C. At the level of the appropriate court. 1. Diversion programs specified under paragraphs A and B, above. 2. Written or oral reprimand or citation. 3. Fine. 4. Payment of the cost of the proceedings. Or 5. Institutional care and custody. Chapter 3. Prosecution. Section 32. Duty of the Prosecutor's Office. There shall be a specially trained prosecutor to conduct inquest, preliminary investigation and prosecution of cases involving a child in conflict with the law. If there is an allegation of torture or ill treatment of a child in conflict with the law during arrest or detention, it shall be the duty of the prosecutor to investigate the same. Section 33. Preliminary Investigation and Filing of Information. The prosecutor shall conduct a preliminary investigation in the following instances. A. When the child in conflict with the law does not qualify for diversion. B. When the child, his or her parents or guardian, does not agree to diversion, as specified in sections 27 and 28. And C when considering the assessment and recommendation of the social worker, the prosecutor determines that diversion is not appropriate for the child in conflict with the law. Upon serving the subpoena and the affidavit of complaint, 
the prosecutor shall notify the public attorney's office of such service, as well as the personal information, and place of detention of the child in conflict with the law. Upon determination of probable cause by the prosecutor, the information against the child, shall be filed before the family court within 45 days from the start of the preliminary investigation. The information must allege that the child acted with discernment. Chapter 4. Court Proceedings Section 34. Bail For purposes of recommending the amount of bail, the privileged mitigating circumstance of minority, shall be considered. Section 35. Release on Recognizance Where a child is detained, the court shall order a. The release of the minor on recognizance to his or her parents and other suitable persons. b. The release of the child in conflict with the law on bail. or c. The transfer of the minor to a youth detention home or youth rehabilitation center. The court shall not order the detention of a child in jail, pending trial or hearing of his or her case. Section 36. Detention of the Child Pending Trial. Children detained pending trial may be released on bail or recognizance, as provided for under Sections 34 and 35 under this Act. In all other cases and whenever possible, detention pending trial may be replaced by alternative measures, such as close supervision, intensive care or placement with a family, or in an educational setting or home. Institutionalization or detention of the child pending trial shall be used only as a measure of last resort and for the shortest possible period of time. Whenever detention is necessary, a child will always be detained in youth detention homes established by local government, pursuant to Section 8 of the Family Courts Act, in the city or municipality where the child resides. In the absence of a youth detention home, the child in conflict with the law may be committed to the care of the DSWD or a local rehabilitation center recognized by the government in the province, city or municipality within the jurisdiction of the court. The center or agency concerned shall be responsible for the child's appearance in court whenever required. Section 37. Diversion Measures where the maximum penalty imposed by law is charged is imprisonment of not more than 12 years, regardless of the fine, or fine alone regardless of the amount, and before arraignment of the child in conflict with the law, the court shall determine whether or not diversion is appropriate. Section 38. Automatic Suspension of Sentence Once the child who is under 18 years of age at the time of the commission of the offense, is found guilty of the offense charged, the court shall determine and ascertain any civil liability, which may have resulted from the offense committed. However, instead of pronouncing the judgment of conviction, the court shall place the child in conflict with the law under suspended sentence, without need of application. Provided, however, that suspension of sentence shall still be applied, even if the juvenile is already 18 years of age or more at the time of the pronouncement of his or her guilt. Upon suspension of sentence and after considering the various circumstances of the child, the court shall impose the appropriate disposition measures, as provided in the Supreme Court rule on juvenile in conflict with the law. Section 39. Discharge of the child in conflict with the law. Upon the recommendation of the social worker who has custody of the child, the court shall dismiss the case against the child, whose sentence has been suspended and against whom disposition measures have been issued, and shall order the final discharge of child, if it finds that the objective of the disposition measures have been fulfilled. The discharge of the child in conflict with the law, shall not affect the civil liability resulting from the commission of the offense, which shall be enforced in accordance with law. Section 40. Return of the Child in Conflict with the Law to Court. If the court finds that the objective of the disposition measures imposed upon the child in conflict with the law, have not been fulfilled, or if the child in conflict with the law, has willfully failed to comply with the conditions of his or her disposition, or rehabilitation program, 
the child in conflict with the law, shall be brought before the court for execution of judgment. If said child in conflict with the law has reached 18 years of age, while under suspended sentence, the court shall determine whether to discharge the child in accordance with this act, to order execution of sentence, or to extend the suspended sentence for a certain specified period, or until the child reaches the maximum age of 21 years. Section 41. Credit in Service of Sentence. The child in conflict with the law, shall be credited in the services of his or her sentence, with a full time spent in actual commitment and detention under this Act. Section 42. Probation as an alternative to imprisonment. The court may, after it shall have convicted and sentenced a child in conflict with the law, and upon application at any time, place the child on probation, in lieu of service of his or her sentence, taking into account the best interest of the child. For this purpose, Section 4 of Presidential Decree No. 968, otherwise known as the Probation Law of 1976, is hereby amended accordingly. Chapter 5. Confidentiality of Records and Proceedings. Section 43. Confidentiality of Records and Proceedings. All records and proceedings involving children in conflict with the law, from initial contact until final disposition of the case, shall be considered privileged and confidential. The public shall be excluded during the proceedings, and the records shall not be disclosed directly or indirectly to anyone, by any of the parties or the participants in the proceedings for any purpose whatsoever, except to determine if the child in conflict with the law may have his or her sentence suspended, or if he or she may be granted probation under the probation law, or to enforce the civil liability imposed in the criminal action. The component authorities shall undertake all measures to protect this confidentiality of proceedings, including non-disclosure of records to the media, maintaining a separate police blotter for cases involving children in conflict with the law, and adopting a system of coding to conceal material information which will lead to the child's identity. Records of a child in conflict with the law, shall not be used in subsequent proceeding, for cases involving the same offender as an adult, except when beneficial for the offender, and upon his or her written consent. A person who has been in conflict with the law as a child, shall not be held under any provision of law, to be guilty of perjury, or of concealment, or misrepresentation by reason of his or her failure to acknowledge the case, or recite any fact related thereto, in response to any inquiry made to him or her for any purpose. Title VI. Rehabilitation and Reintegration Section 44. Objective of Rehabilitation and Reintegration The objective of rehabilitation and reintegration of children in conflict with the law is to provide them with interventions, approaches and strategies, that will enable them to improve their social functioning, with the end goal of reintegration to their families, and as productive members of their communities. Section 45. Court Order Required. No child shall be received in any rehabilitation or training facility, without a valid order issued by the court, after a hearing for the purpose. The details of this order, shall be immediately entered in a register exclusively for children in conflict with the law. No child shall be admitted in any facility, where there is no such register. Section 46. Separate Facilities from Adults. In all rehabilitation or training facilities, it shall be mandatory, that children shall be separated from adults, unless they are members of the same family. Under no other circumstance, shall a child in conflict with the law, be placed in the same confinement as adults. The rehabilitation, training or confinement area of children in conflict with the law, shall provide a home environment, where children in conflict with the law can be provided with quality counseling and treatment. Section 47. Female Children Female children in conflict with the law placed in an institution, shall be given special attention as to their personal needs and problems. They shall be handled by female doctors, correction officers and social workers, 
and shall be accommodated separately from male children in conflict with the law. Section 48. Gender Sensitivity Training. No personnel of rehabilitation and training facilities shall handle children in conflict with the law without having undergone gender sensitivity training. Section 49. Establishment of Baha'i Pug Aza. Each province and highly urbanized city and the LGUs shall be responsible for building, funding and operating a Baha'i Pog Asa within their jurisdiction, following the standards that will be set by the DSWD and adopted by the JJWC. Every Baha'i Pog Asa will have a special facility called the IJISC. This center will be allocated for children in conflict with the law, in accordance with sections 20, 20A, and 20B hereof. These children will be required to undergo a more intensive multidisciplinary intervention program. The JJWC in partnership with, but not limited to, the DSWD, the DOH, the DEPED and the DILG, will develop and set the standards for the implementation of the multidisciplinary intervention program of the IJISC. Upon institutionalization of the IJISC program, the JJWC will continue to monitor and provide technical assistance to the multidisciplinary teams operating the said centers. Section 50. Care and Maintenance of the Child in Conflict with the Law. The expenses for the care and maintenance of a child in conflict with a law under institutional care shall be borne by his or her parents or those persons liable to support him or her. Provided that in case his or her parents or those persons liable to support him or her cannot pay all or part of said expenses, the municipality where the offense was committed shall pay one third of said expenses or part thereof. The province to which the municipality belongs shall pay one third and the remaining one-third, shall be borne by the national government. Chartered cities shall pay two-thirds of said expenses, and in case a chartered city cannot pay said expenses, part of the internal revenue allotments applicable to the unpaid portion, shall be withheld and applied to the settlement of said obligations. Provided, further, that in the event that the child in conflict with the law is not a resident of the municipality or city where the offense was committed, the court, upon its determination, may require the city or municipality where the child in conflict with the law resides, to shoulder the cost. The LGU's expected expenditures on the local juvenile intervention program, for children at risk and children in conflict with the law, shall be included in the LGU's annual budget. Highly urbanized cities and provincial governments, should include a separate budget for the construction and maintenance of the Baha'i Pagasa including the operation of the IJISC within the Baha'i Pagasa. Section 51. Confinement of Convicted Children in Agricultural Camps and Other Training Facilities A child in conflict with the law may after conviction and upon order of the court be made to serve his or her sentence in lieu of confinement in a regular penal institution in an agricultural camp and other training facilities that may be established maintained, supervised and controlled by the Bucher, in coordination with the DSWD. Section 52. Rehabilitation of Children in Conflict with the Law Children in conflict with the law, whose sentences are suspended, may upon order of the court, undergo any, or a combination of disposition measures best suited to the rehabilitation and welfare of the child, as provided in the Supreme Court Rule on Juvenile in Conflict with the Law. If the community-based rehabilitation is availed of by a child in conflict with the law, he or she shall be released to parents, guardians, relatives or any other responsible person in the community. Under the supervision and guidance of the local social welfare and development officer, and in coordination with his or her parents or guardian. The child in conflict with the law shall participate in community-based programs, which shall include, but not limited to. 1. Competency and life skills development. 2. Sociocultural and recreational activities. 3. Community volunteer projects. 4. Leadership training. 5. Social services. 
Six, home life services. Seven, health services. Eight, spiritual enrichment. And nine, community and family welfare services. In accordance therewith, the family of the child in conflict with the law shall endeavor to actively participate in the community based rehabilitation. Based on the progress of the youth in the community, a final report will be forwarded by the local social welfare and development officer to the court for final disposition of the case. If the community based programs are provided as diversion measures, under Chapter 2, Title 5, the programs enumerated above, shall be made available to the child in conflict with the law. Section 53. Youth Rehabilitation Center. The Youth Rehabilitation Center shall provide 24-hour group care, treatment and rehabilitation services, under the guidance of a trained staff, where residents are cared for under a structured therapeutic environment, with the end view of reintegrating them in their families and communities as socially functioning individuals. A quarterly report shall be submitted by the center to the proper court on the progress of the children in conflict with the law. Based on the progress of the youth in the center, a final report will be forwarded to the court for final disposition of the case. The DSWD shall establish youth rehabilitation centers in each region of the country. Section 54 Objectives of Community-Based Programs The objective of community-based programs are as follows. a. Prevent disruption in the education or means of livelihood of the child in conflict with the law in case he or she is studying, working, or attending vocational learning institutions. b. Prevent separation of the child in conflict with the law from his or her parents or guardians to maintain the support system fostered by their relationship, and to create greater awareness of their mutual and reciprocal responsibilities. c. Facilitate the rehabilitation and mainstreaming of the child in conflict with the law, and encourage community support and involvement. And d. Minimize the stigma that attaches to the child in conflict with the law, by preventing jail detention. Section 55. Criteria of Community-Based Programs Every LGU shall establish community-based programs that will focus on the rehabilitation and reintegration of the child. All programs shall meet the criteria to be established by the JJWC, which shall take into account the purpose of the program, the need for the consent of the child and his or her parents or legal guardians, and the participation of the child-centered agencies whether public or private. Section 56. Aftercare Support Services for Children in Conflict with the Law Children in conflict with the law, whose cases have been dismissed by the proper court because of good behavior, as per recommendation of the DSWD social worker and or any accredited NGO Youth Rehabilitation Center, shall be provided aftercare services by the local social welfare and development officer, for a period of at least six months. The service includes counseling and other community-based services, designed to facilitate social reintegration, prevent reoffending, and make the children productive members of the community. Title 7. General Provisions Chapter 1. Exempting Provisions Section 57. Status Offenses any conduct not considered an offense, or not penalized if committed by an adult, shall not be considered an offense, and shall not be punished if committed by a child. Section 57A. Violations of Local Ordinances Ordinances enacted by local governments, concerning juvenile status offenses such as, but not limited to, curfew violations, truancy, parental disobedience, anti-smoking and anti-drinking laws, as well as light offenses and misdemeanors against public order or safety such as, but not limited to, disorderly conduct, public scandal, harassment, drunkenness, public intoxication, criminal nuisance, vandalism, gambling, mendicancy, littering, public urination, and trespassing, 
shall be for the protection of children. No penalty shall be imposed on children for said violations, and they shall instead be brought to their residence, or to any Burungai official at the Burungai Hall, to be released to the custody of their parents. Appropriate intervention programs shall be provided for in such ordinances. The child shall also be recorded as a child at risk, and not as a child in conflict with the law. The ordinance shall also provide for intervention programs, such as counseling, attendance in group activities for children, and for the parents, attendance in parenting education seminars. Section 58. Offenses not applicable to children. Persons below 18 years of age shall be exempt from prosecution for the crime of vagrancy and prostitution under Section 202 of the Revised Penal Code of Mendicancy under Presidential Decree No. 1563 and sniffing of rugby under Presidential Decree No. 1619, such prosecution being inconsistent with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Provided, that said persons shall undergo appropriate counseling and treatment program. Section 59. Exemption from the Application of Death Penalty. The provisions of the Revised Penal Code, as amended, Republic Act No. 9165, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, and other special laws notwithstanding, no death penalty shall be imposed upon children in conflict with the law. Chapter 2. Prohibited Acts. Section 60. Prohibition Against Labeling and Shaming. In the conduct of the proceedings, beginning from the initial contact with the child, the competent authorities must refrain from branding or labeling children as young criminals, juvenile delinquents, prostitutes, or attaching to them in any manner any other derogatory names. Likewise, no discriminatory remarks and practices shall be allowed particularly with respect to the child's class or ethnic origin. Section 61. Other Prohibited Acts. The following and any other similar acts shall be considered prejudicial and detrimental to the psychological, emotional, social, spiritual, moral and physical health and well-being of the child in conflict with the law, and therefore, prohibited. A. Employment of threats of whatever kind and nature. B. Employment of abusive, coercive and punitive measures, such as cursing, beating, stripping, and solitary confinement. C. Employment of degrading, inhuman and cruel forms of punishment, such as shaving the heads, pouring irritating, corrosive or harmful substances over the body of the child in conflict with the law, or forcing him or her to walk around the community wearing signs which embarrass, humiliate, and degrade his or her personality and dignity. And? D. Compelling the child to perform involuntary servitude in any and all forms, under any and all instances. Chapter 3. Penal Provision Section 62. Violation of the provisions of this Act, or rules or regulations in general. Any person who violates any provision of this Act, or any rule or regulation promulgated in accordance thereof, shall, upon conviction for each Act or omission, be punished by a fine of not less than 20,000 pesos, but not more than 50,000 pesos, or suffer imprisonment of not less than 8 years, but not more than 10 years, or both, such fine and imprisonment at the discretion of the court, unless a higher penalty is provided for in the revised penal code, or special laws. If the offender is a public officer or employee, he or she shall, in addition to such fine and or imprisonment, be held administratively liable and shall suffer the penalty of perpetual absolute disqualification. Chapter 4. Appropriation Provision Section 63. Appropriations The amount necessary to carry out the provisions of this Act shall be charged against the current year's appropriations of the JJWC under the budget of the Department of Justice. Thereafter, such sums as may be necessary for the continued implementation of this Act, shall be included in the budget of the DSWD under the Annual General Appropriations Act. 
provided that the amount of 400 million pesos shall be appropriated for the construction of Baha'i Pog Asa rehabilitation centers in provinces or cities with high incidence of children in conflict with the law, to be determined and identified by the DSWD and the JJWC on a priority basis. Provided further, that the said amount shall be coursed through the Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH for its proper implementation. The LGUs concerned, shall make available from its own resources or assets, their counterpart share equivalent to the national government contribution of 5 million pesos per rehabilitation center. In addition, the Council may accept donations, grants and contributions from various sources, in cash or in kind, for purposes relevant to its functions, subject to the usual government accounting and auditing rules and regulations. Title 8. Transitory Provisions Section 64. Children in Conflict with the Law, 15 Years Old and Below Upon effectivity of this Act, cases of children 15 years old and below at the time of the commission of the crime, shall immediately be dismissed, and the child shall be referred to the appropriate local social welfare and development officer. Such officer, upon thorough assessment of the child, shall determine whether to release the child to the custody of his or her parents, or refer the child to prevention programs as provided under this Act. Those with suspended sentences and undergoing rehabilitation at the Youth Rehabilitation Center, shall likewise be released, unless it is contrary to the best interest of the child. Section 65. Children Detained Pending Trial If the child is detained pending trial, the family court shall also determine whether or not continued detention is necessary and, if not, determine appropriate alternatives for detention. If detention is necessary and he or she is detained with adults, the court shall immediately order the transfer of the child to a youth detention home. Section 66. Inventory of Locked Up and Detained Children in Conflict with the Law The PNP, the BJMP and the Buker are hereby directed to submit to the JJWC, within 90 days from the effectivity of this Act, an inventory of all children in conflict with the law under their custody. Section 67. Children who reach the age of 18 years pending diversion and court proceedings. If a child reaches the age of 18 years pending diversion and court proceedings, the appropriate diversion authority in consultation with the local social welfare and development officer or the family court, in consultation with the social services and counseling division or SSCD of the Supreme Court, as the case may be, shall determine the appropriate disposition. In case the appropriate court executes the judgment of conviction, and unless the child in conflict with the law has already availed of probation under Presidential Decree No. 603, or other similar laws, the child may apply for probation if qualified under the provisions of the probation law. Section 68. Children who have been convicted and are serving sentence. Persons who have been convicted and are serving sentence at the time of the effectivity of this Act, and who were below the age of 18 years, at the time of the commission of the offense for which they were convicted, and are serving sentence, shall likewise benefit from the retroactive application of this Act they shall be entitled to appropriate dispositions provided under this Act, and their sentences shall be adjusted accordingly. They shall be immediately released if they are so qualified under this Act or other applicable law. Title 9. Final Provisions Section 69. Rule-Making Power The JJWC shall issue the IRRs for the implementation of the provisions of this Act, within 90 days from the effectivity thereof. Section 70. Separability Clause If, for any reason, any section or provision of this Act is declared unconstitutional or invalid by the Supreme Court, the other sections or provisions hereof not affected by such declaration, shall remain in full force and effect. Section 71. Repealing Clause. All existing laws, orders, decrees, 
rules and regulations or parts thereof inconsistent with the provisions of this Act, are hereby repealed or modified accordingly. Section 72. Effectivity. This Act shall take effect after 15 days from its publication in at least two national newspapers of general circulation. Approved on April 28, 2006.